G'day people, Snowcrash here from Snowcrash Constructions. I've got a little something to show you today that's probably going to be of interest. And no, it's not an anomalous materials storage and extraction facility. That wouldn't interest you in the least. No, it's a super industrial automated furnace facility. I recently saw an industrial furnace set up on Mumbo Jumbo's channel. A link to his will be down the bottom. But, unlike his, ours is completely solid state. Uh, I'd say since about 1947 we've had the transistor and we uh, left valves and vacuum tubes behind us a long time ago. His setup, we've tried it and it works very well. There's no doubt about that at all. Uh, it works, but why have all those minecarts shuffling backwards and forwards, ready to fail at any moment? I just don't know. Anyway, you don't have to do it that way, you can do it this way. It fully distributes your smelting items and your fuel, fuel automatically, and it just pumps out the output nicely. Your fuel goes in this chest like that and look it's already taken it and your smelting items go in here and off they go your output is down the bottom here and if we go down there in a moment or two you'll start to see that netherrack quartz coming in it works really nicely and you'll see this sort of punching in in blocks of four and that's a simple reason for that. There's four furnaces here operating in parallel. Inherent with a design like this is often a problem of things getting stuck in there as it gets towards the end. Now we have a little bit of circuitry here that deals with that problem but you don't have to have it if you're happy to leave a few unsmelted items in the uh, system. Now there's only really one downside to this particular design. Oh, let's just say two, anyway. It doesn't look really fantastic, especially with the additional circuitry running around the outside there, and that deals with unclogging it. Uh, no, it doesn't look good at all, I'll be honest. It's, especially with this bright sort of maroon coloured wool, it, it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't look real good. But, look, the fact is it works, it gets the job done, and at Snow Crash Constructions, you know, we get on those nasty, high latency, laggy servers, and we test things out, and it works. There's one other downside to it. It's very hard to access the furnaces. Very hard. You can access the one on each end, as you can see but you cannot get to the others. They are completely surrounded by hoppers. You can get down here, but you only got access to the hoppers. Now, I don't know why that would be a problem. If something gets stuck in there, it shouldn't, but uh, you, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. You, you're going to have to knock out a hopper or two. But the fact is you'd probably uh, block this all up, make it look all nice and pretty, and literally just have three chests. And you load it up and stuff comes out. How's our netherrack going? Well, it's done. 64 of those. There's the quartz. All done. All right. Uh, how about we uh, get to work on showing you how to build this? Uh, I've switched to a slightly paler color. Uh, this is uh, pink wool. It doesn't it look good. No, not really. It looks rubbish. But, you know, it's all we had in stock at the time. So let's use what we've got and away we go. So you're going to start with a chest. We're just going to use uh, three furnaces for this particular design, but it is scalable and is quite easy to increase its uh, smelting capacity. Just put down your output chest, and you're going to need to put hoppers. The first hopper is going to be placed into that. One, two, and three. As you can see, they're all facing in the direction of the chest. Put your furnaces on top. One, two, three and some more hoppers. This is your fuel hoppers. One, two, three. Facing into your furnaces. Okay, you're just going to need to put some blocks down here so that you can put your redstone repeaters down. 
repeater, 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 just one tick, don't change them. Some dust here. You'll need a couple of blocks on the end here for the comparator. Dust. Torch. Next you're just going to have to put some hoppers here pointing in the direction of the comparator. One, two, three. As you can see, that's how they're pointing. Put one on the end. Chest on top and that will be your fuel input. Next we want some hoppers pointing downwards and into these furnaces. One, two, three. This will be your smelting items going into there. And once again, uh, we'll need a couple of blocks out of here for the comparator. And some dust. and hoppers facing towards the comparator. One on the end and we're good to go. Chest on top and that'll be where your smelting items go, your ore. We need to break this signal line here as we don't want them connected. The easiest way, put a block on top that fixes that problem. We need some blocks on the rear so we can put our repeaters. Repeaters facing into there. Take the dust out to here and one torch there. Now that's pretty much it, that'll work. But at the end of the run, there will be items stuck in these hoppers. To stop that problem from happening, what you need to do is take an output that senses when the last item has left the chest. It basically uh, empties all the hoppers. And to do that, it's pretty straightforward. We just need a block down here Take it around here. Now this looks pretty ugly. There would be other ways to do it. You could run it over the top and you could probably get a little bit fancy about how you want to manage it. But this is how we're doing it here just to show you what's happening. Comparator there. We need to invert the signal, so we'll just put a torch dust there, torch here, and then take dust all the way around till you get to here. There's two places we need to prevent the signal from interfering, as you can see, here and here. We don't want that. Block on top. And there. Problem solved. Now, that's pretty much it. Grab some fuel. Grab something to smelt. Put fuel in here. Smelting item in there. And in a moment, we should start to see that netherrack coming through the quartz. There we go. 
first three have come in, we've only got three furnaces here, we'll wait a moment and then we should get six, and it should continue on until we basically completely got all 64 through. I'll come back in a moment when that's done. Alright, last little bit of quartz should be going into the chest, and then we'll be finished. Now remember how I said sometimes items will get stuck in there, we've added a little circuit to flush them out and that's all good. We only added that particular uh, piece of circuitry to the smelting items. There we go, it's finished. We didn't do it on the fuel line. Uh, that would be quite easy to do. It's uh, a mirror image of that top run from here, comparator, dust, torch dust line over to here it's exactly the same but one block lower so you'd start right there and you'd run it all the way around and back into here so uh, what that would do is make sure that all your fuel is used but look let's be honest fuel something you're just going to keep topping up you don't care if a bit of it gets stuck, you just keep adding more, it doesn't really matter. That's why I haven't added it on, and uh, I'll leave it to the viewers to implement that, it's not terribly hard. So there you have it, a parallel processing, evenly distributed, super industrial smelting furnace facility. What a mouthful that is. Anyway, it sounds fantastic, it is fantastic, I know you love it, I know you want one, and there you go, now you can build it, and you can just be pumping out smooth stone 100 times faster than all your buddies. Alright, well, I've got to go, there's plenty more to do. So this is Snow Crash, and I'll catch you later. Cheers. <laughs>